Hey, what's up everyone? We are back with another build video. This one was voted on by you guys, my community. I gave you some options between a spear build, a crossbow. One of the options was an archetype build, which you guys voted on, and that was the one that was the winner. And by archetype, I'm talking about blood and holy, etc, etc. So we decided and went ahead and made a frost build. Now before I get into the build, I want you guys to know, for those who are watching this, I'm launching my own server, the Redloft Ragnarok server. It's a full loop PvP server that we're going to do research retainment. So whatever research you get done, the research desk study, etc, you will retain on the next wipe. So if that's something of interest to you and you want to join in, uh, be sure to join my Discord down below. Now without further ado, let's get into the build. So we decided to cover Frost for this archetype build. I'm really excited about this one for two reasons. One, this is honestly a very strong build, especially at isolating targets. It's really easy to do so. You have a lot of capabilities and combos you can set up and the chill effect, even if you don't freeze the opponent, is still really strong as it enables your other abilities as well as your allies to hit their abilities. And so it's a really, really strong build in my opinion. I'm actually really proud of this one. Number two, reason number two why I'm excited about this build, if you guys don't know, haven't been able to figure out, I'm a huge Viking nerd. Um, and as you could tell, Frost abilities, I slapped on the Ash Folk uh, cape and helmet to kind of further that aesthetic. Uh, this is right up my alley. And in theme of that, uh, we are actually using the sword and axes for this build. Partly because it fits the Viking aesthetic of fighting with axes or a sword, uh, but also it just pairs really well with this build. So I'm going to kind of walk through both weapons, and I'm going to go through the dash, the abilities we're using, and the ultimate. So stick around if you're interested in that. Before getting into weapons, I do want to talk about jewelry and blood types. For the jewelry piece, I recommend Knight's Son of the Beast for the physical crit strike chance and damage, as we'll be doing a lot of melee fighting with this build. A lot of this build is going to be using your chills and freeze to be able to get hits off, and so having the higher fizz crit uh, chance and damage with the critical strikes is going to be really important for when you're actually smacking, as well as it pairs well with stuff like the Whirlwind, which each of those little hits will have the chance to crit off of it. And then for the blood type, I would recommend warrior type for this actually. And that's because you want the parry ability to be able to kind of like have the higher chance of kind of negating damage. Because this is a very aggressive build that you want to be going at players with. And so in combination with kind of having the shield charging at them, having that kind of parry ability is really useful for being able to kind of like fight people in close range. So I like the parry and then the raw damage and everything else the warrior provides is really, really useful for this build. So for the weapons, like I mentioned, we're doing the sword and axes for this. If you're interested in a more in-depth review of these weapons, check out my axe build or my sword build. That's going to give a better breakdown and a specific build for these weapons. This is more of a, these weapons fit better with this build situation. The sword, uh, very basic. You have the three slashes, the Q, which is the whirlwind, and then the E, which is the shockwave where you shoot that out. And if it hits the target, they fly into the air and you, you know, land down on top of them. Then for the axes, you have the autos here, the Q, and then the E, which if those both hit the opponent, it incapacitates them. So this is really strong, and you can start figuring out why and why this build works, is that both these abilities, the E's for both, depending on the situation, are both really, really strong. Some of the best kind of like CC lockdown abilities in the game, and by running Frost with them, at the very least, you're slowing the target down to make it easier to hit. If not, you're going to freeze them and guarantee a hit. Now, a quick tidbit, um, if you freeze someone and then throw the shockwave, you're actually going to dash around on them, but they're not going to get flown up into the air. So that's just something to know about that. But otherwise, they just really pair well with the ability of slowing down targets or like locking them down to be able to hit your chain combo with your sword or your axes. And I run both because both have kind of situational abilities where this one, I might want to kind of keep moving and throw it while this one, you kind of like stop moving. So it's a bit more situational as well as the cues for each of them. This is a bit more kind of like in your face, spin around DPS. Well, this is more of a kind of like dash high mobility. Um, we have dodgy things or engaging real fast, etc., etc. So you kind of swap between the two depending on what you like.
Now for the dash ability, we're gonna be rocking Veil of Frost. Of course, this is a full frost build. What else would we run? If you watch my dash video, I actually think this is the strongest dash in the game, just because you every time you use it, you get that guaranteed shield. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to throw an ability or recast or anything. It's just very simple and strong, especially for these abilities that you're gonna play kind of in and out and aggressive with. You want the shield to kind of help allow you to kind of make these plays with getting the freezes off and diving in on the enemy. So the Veil of Frost is really good, as well as the Conjurer, a Nova of Frost, with 50% magic damage, inflicting chill on nearby enemies. That's also really beneficial and able to kind of get the chill on enemies at all time uh, and kind of maneuver around that. You get this ability um, over up here by Vincent the Frostbringer. Now going to the main abilities, one is going to be like a mandatory one you want to run with this build, and the other two you can swap between depending on what you're doing. Now the mandatory one is you're going to want to run Frostbat. This is a really nice ability. You launch a projectile that explodes upon impact, dealing 100% magic damage and inflicts chill on surrounding enemies. Hitting a chilled enemy freezes them for 4 seconds. So this is really nice because first off you get two of them, so if that hits and then that hits, they're, no, they're frozen. The first one, if it hits, it'll slow them, which makes other combos really easy to hit, whether that's the other frost bat or just you no know, throwing out a shock wave or anything like that. And additionally, you want some range capabilities. Obviously, with the sword and the axes, we don't have a lot of range options if the fight's going that way. So having the frost bat to kind of be able to whittle down the enemy and slow them for your real combos is really beneficial and probably like one of the like honestly probably the best. Uh, ability for the frost like basic tree so you want to run that they really help set up your combos and the frost bat ability is something you get really early in the game by the second boss kill the frost archer so you can start using this build like right away on the fresh server and not have to worry about that for the other two abilities or the other ability that you swap between the two you have two options now when looking at the tree you can kind of see we're obviously limited down to three options crystal lance i don't run i talked about before my strongest uh pvp ability so i think this is a really good opener if you have someone who runs it and you're like setting up an ambush or something like that it's a really good opener on the group but otherwise once the combat begins it's really hard to get off so i like running frost barrier the most out of frost barrier and ice nova just because I like the shield is really good, especially against you know, your casters who use Chaos Volley. You can kind of deal with that and have to worry about that, especially since you're not going to have your own Chaos Volley to throw back at them. And secondly, with the shield, when it does block something, you summon this like wave of frost is what they call it. It's like this pillar that pops up. It deals 50% magic damage and inflicts a chill when the barrier is struck. So if someone's shooting at you, I can kind of block it. If they get chilled, I can immediately ice bat onto them and all of a sudden my combo is going off and we're, we're, we're dealing a lot of damage and they have to use their dash to get away and not let us stay on top of them. So I really like that. It gives you a lot more freedom and be able to pick when you engage and when you don't engage as you have that defensive capability. You get this ability also from Mr. Vincent the Frostbringer. So if this is of interest, again, level 39, you get that relatively early into the game. The other option is if you want is to run um, Ice Nova. I'm not the biggest fan of Ice Nova, but it works well if you are raiding people because it's hard to have as much like openness in a fight when you're raiding someone or defending a raid and it's a bit more isolated or in like hallways. So it's harder for people to dodge out of it. But this is what it looks like. You can see it kind of takes a second to move. Most people, you can just kind of walk out of that initial range, uh, depending on where you kind of cast it. And then the damage isn't that impressive. But like I said, if you are raiding someone or it's in a tight passageway that you know you're going to fight in, it's definitely not a bad option if you want to rock that instead of the barrier, if you are looking for more DPS out of this build. Now that ability you do get from Frostmaw, the Mountain Terror. So he's a level 55 boss, so a little bit later into the game. Um, but you can still rock that if you so wish. And yeah, so those are the basic abilities. Like I said, the kind of combos you're looking for are perhaps, you know, getting a, a shield, uh, chill off, hitting with the frost bat, you know, hitting with the X strike dot, you know, jumping in, or the same thing, you know, you get the, the, the frost bat off, you kind of chill in, start hitting, and as they're frozen or slowed, you can hit your shock wave, that kind of idea. You're kind of looking in these 4v4 fights or whatever the numbers are to find kind of the weakest link, and you can kind of jump on them and really break down their health and kind of isolate them out of the fight before you engage and do the same on another person. So it's a really like high level PvP build, in my opinion, because you're not just running around with Scholar Blood, Chaos Volley, just pumping out damage. You are negating enemies. So you find the weakest target 
target, or the guy who's rocking the Chaos Volley build and dishing out the you know, highest amount of damage, you block his Chaos Volleys with the Frost Barrier and just really screw him over, as he's normally, if he's you know, throwing Chaos Volleys, he's not going to have the speed to be able to dodge these waves of Frost from the Frost Barrier, and then you can engage with your own combo on them. So that's kind of the play style with it. Lastly, in terms of ultimate, we are rocking Arctic Leap. Um, I think this is one of the best ultimates in the game, just in general, let alone uh, for PvP. The alternative is Frost Vortex, which is similar to the Ice Nova. It's like decent for like raiding or certain situations, but overall Arctic Leap is just a stronger ability. You get the mobility to get out of harm's way. You slam down. People have to waste their mobility to get away from you or they get frozen. And it's this large AOE and it deals 225% magic damage. So it's a huge chunk of damage, even if you're not rocking uh, you know, a bunch of you know, Witch Potion and, and, the, and the Soul Shard with increased spell power or anything like that. Even if just rocking base stats is still going to deal a huge chunk of damage so i highly recommend arctic leap i think it's easily one of the best if not the best pvp ultimates right now and there's no reason why not to pair it with it because it does the same thing of you get that slam down and you go into your combo and you get a freeze off right after it and then lastly, Arctic Leap you get from Terraclaw the Ogre, who's one of the later game bosses at level 67. So that's just one thing to keep in mind with this if you're trying to fully complete this build. And yeah, that is my Frost build. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you are interested in it. I think it was fun trying to have this challenge of building an archetype build that works well in PvP. And I think this is a strong one. I definitely felt the potential and the power of this build as I was using it. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts. If I have any criticisms of things that should change, Try keeping in the context that we were trying to do pure frost abilities. And I'd be curious to hear what you think would kind of run better in terms of what weapons to pair with these abilities. As I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this content, like and subscribe and follow me at twitch.tv slash redloft. And join the Discord if you're interested in our PvP server. Till next time.